My name is Michelle. I'm with Learning House. Today we're talking about grad school. You really have to be honest about what it is you want to do. So especially when you're thinking about investing your time, your money, your energy into a graduate school program, which this is after your bachelor's. There are some careers where you must have a PhD. If you're a doctor, you'll need the credentials. If you want to practice law, you're going to need to pursue a JD. If you want to start your own business, it might not be necessary to have an MBA. I know students who, Michelle, I want to get my MBA. And I say, great, what's what's your interest? And they have no idea. What are you interested in in business? Is it startups? Is it entrepreneurship? When you're choosing a grad program, think about your interests, your skills. What do you want to do? What are your career goals? Research the departments that are actively involved in those topic areas. What does the program offer to you? What are the classes that you would be taking? What are the professors like? Now everything is online, so it's so easy to reach out to people. Don't be shy, asking for information, requesting clarification. So what can a a grad program do for you? While you're participating in a grad program, you're reading materials from different places. The people around you are also educated and they're also on the same track as you. Your conversations will probably mirror that. Number two, connections. You will have relationships and connections within a particular field or an industry. So for instance, I did my master's in social work and during my program, I came in contact, whether it was through my clinical internships, whether it was through uh, guest speakers, I made connections with different people because of my program that maybe I wouldn't have had had access to. When you do a grad program, this places you in a different level when you're thinking about getting jobs, when you're thinking about advancing your career. Less than 2% of the American population over the age of 25 have a PhD. Even if you don't do the full on PhD, but you do do a master's program, this will impact the way people view you, the way that they look at your CV, the way they look at your potential, because they know, okay, this person went through a master's program. They're curious. They know how to learn. They probably know how to write. They can read. They can synthesize information. So it gives you a little bit of respect and credibility and social status. When you participate in a graduate program, you're living in a college town. And the college towns are fun. They're diverse. Any place where there's a campus, where there's a university, it attracts people from different places in the world. You're going to be exposed to different thoughts. And that in turn is going to enhance your worldview. In college and university towns, it can be easier to find jobs. In university areas, there's always stuff going on. So whether it has to do with culture, with sports, with entertainment, with theater, with arts, you will have choices. Do you want to participate in a book club? Do you want to go to the theater event? Do you want to go to the live concert? Do you want to participate in a debate? Do you want to sign up for a writing seminar? When you have a master's or a PhD, it provides you career flexibility. Yes, it is a certain pathway for you to go along if you're specializing in a particular subject. Subject. But if you're looking to change careers, it can also be a springboard for you. I ended up going into advertising, but I used my master's to help me make that leap. When you have a master's degree, you can leverage that to get where you want to go in terms of your career and your profession. Let's be honest and talk about some of the negative considerations. Your social circle will change because you're moving to a new place. You're taking on new goals. Suddenly you have a new schedule and you're going to be meeting new people. In all of this, your priorities may shift. When you live in one place your whole life, your relationships are deep and connected. When you take yourself out of your known environment into to something unfamiliar, it changes everything. Yes, you'll still be able to maintain some friendships, but you may find that your priorities shift. While you're in school, you will become very close, especially if you're in a PhD program, 
with the people in your department. When you broaden your knowledge, you may change your mind. And this just happens when you become informed and you're learning new things. You may make up different decisions about society, community, yourself, your family, your friends, and that can also impact your relationships. When you're working on your degree, your future is probably not clear. You don't exactly know where will you be hired, what's going to happen. So say you're doing your MBA, program, unless you're working for a company and they're paying for you to do that program, maybe you're in this program thinking this is going to provide an opportunity for me and you don't know what that opportunity is. When you're a PhD student, you're working in a lab, you're doing research in the beginning. It's usually not your own. When it is your own research, you're thinking, is my research going to get published? Is this going to count for anything? Is this going to mean anything? Things are not going to be fully clear for you while you're in the program. If you want a very clear cut path that's straightforward, you're not going to find that. And a lot of people think they will. So when they enter the program and it's not as clear as they thought, that can be really challenging. The last thing is finances. And this is a biggie because yes, a higher degree in the long run can set you up for higher pay. But while you're in the program, managing finances can be really stressful. Some universities give stipends for research, for teaching, you can get scholarships. But if your program is not fully covered, it can be stressful. Do your research, make sure you know how much is the program, what is the estimate living expenses in this area. When I was a grad student, I was living in Manhattan, which is like one of the most expensive cities in the United States. I wish I had somebody to walk me through this and tell me about this before I did it because it was really hard. So have a clear understanding of living expenses, housing costs, books, what does the university provide, what is reasonable to expect, and then you can make decisions accordingly. I know a lot of students who enter grad programs because they think it's going to rain. Oh, once I get a PhD, it's going to be very easy or if I have a master's in business, you know, I'm going to make six figures. Let go of that because it might not work in that way. What is most important to you? And this is how you're going to do it. Get a journal, write down when you think about your career, when you think about your future, when you think about what you want to do, uh, your passions, your joys, your profession, make note of that. All right. And set that aside. Then your next assignment is interview people, you know, so these could be friends, family members, ask, was it worth it for you? What do you wish you would have known? Use those questions. And what you can do is write a list of three to four questions before you approach this person. If you know people in the United States now in a master's program, ping them, send them a note. Hey, how is it going? What's best about your program? What's, what are you enjoying most? What's the hardest part? What do you wish you would have known before you left Nepal? And get curious. You're collecting information information. As you're collecting information, then you can sit with it and take a step back and think and decide for yourself what's the right step. I'm sure some of you came here wanting me to tell you what is the right move, but I cannot. I wish you all the best. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.